morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Jade and this is How to Open iOS. Yeah! And today, we have the marriage of beautiful music with Crimson Crux live on the show. Are you ready? We've got Nate and Tanya waiting in the background. We're going to kick off with one of their songs. This is Bad Day. My name is Jay. This is How to Happen iOS, and it is Friday here in Australia. Thursday for the rest of you living outside of Australia. <laughs> end of the week for me. Not really. There is no end of the week anymore when you're a YouTube content creator. Are you all doing good out there? Good to see so many people in the chat hanging out with us. We love you. Long time. Yeah. All right. So that was Bad Day from our guest today, Crimson Crux. Let me uh, tell you guys, if you're a member... You have custom emojis. There are three, count them, three, count them, three, count them, three, three, three. I'll even do it again. Look, three emojis in the chat. We've got, we've got a Nate emoji. We've got a Tanya emoji and we've got a, a duo emoji. So make sure you throw those emojis around in the chat and uh, let our guests know that you love them. So why are we having these two special guests on the show today? Well, uh, you know, I was cruising around like I do, hiding around in people's chats, listening to new music and stuff like that, and I came across Crimson Crux on Thomas's show, actually. It was the first time. I was like, hang on a minute. This sounds pretty damn good. i got to get these two on the show, find out more about them. And um, I think I reached out about a month ago saying, let's have them on the show. 
And we're finally at that moment. So I hope you're all excited. We've got two hours ahead of listening to their tunes, finding out all about them. And uh, you know the deal, everyone in chat, about 30 minutes in after the second song, I get to say hello to you all and you can fill the chat full of weirdness or whatever it is. Have fun in the chat because that's what these shows are all about. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get down to it because they are childhood sweethearts. They've gone from metal to funk to rock to whatever it is that they're doing now. They have a ministry they're cool as hell. And we're going to, not, well, not hell. <laughs> That's probably the wrong thing to say after talking about a ministry. <laughs> but, you know, me, I'm an idiot. So let's bring them on, ladies and gentlemen. I can see what they're doing here in the chat. It is Tanya and Nate from Cruise and Cross. <laughs> well, mm. sorry. And love, exciting and new. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, Jay, thank you. We, we, we've been married for too long, so it's... <laughs> Let's talk about that. Why, why, what? <laughs> childhood sweethearts. Now, what's in... It, it always feels like, as an Australian, childhood sweethearts seems like such an American thing. Like, uh, when, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It just sounds like when I, I could never hear... I'd never hear an Australian go, yeah, well, childhood straight, it's a sweetheart, mate. It just feels like an American thing. So how, when did you first meet? At what age did did the the love happen? Uh, okay, so we were we were 10 years old, and we went to the same church, the same homeschool. We met – the homeschool had this thing where they would meet about twice a month uh, and just kind of, you know, it was kind of the umbrella that all the, the parents uh, – would meet um, and uh, they would they would kind of catch up and update on the curriculum and you know stuff like that and so we were playing steal the bacon in I, I mean I remember it like it was yesterday it was it was off in the grass in in, in the uh, we actually have a song a line a line about this in our song that but the song that boy is literally our story um, but we, off in the grass they were playing steal the bacon and hang, we did this on. twice steal the I don't know what steal the bacon is. Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> steal the bacon okay. is uh, obviously an American game. Sure. Uh, and uh, so what happens is uh, let's say you, you draw a line uh, in the middle of this field, dirt field, uh, grass, whatever. And you basically have two objectives, right? It could be uh, flags. It could be uh, any object that you choose and you stick one, you, you have two teams and you, the, the goal is to steal the bacon. A lot of times we play with a newspaper. Sounds right. <laughs> I, didn't say hide, I didn't say hide the zucchini. I didn't say hide the zucchini and steal the bacon. Uh, but so what you do, we, we used to do it with news, a newspaper, right? Roll of newspaper um, back in the 90s. And so you'd stick a newspaper on the far end of one side and a newspaper on the far end of the other side or whatever it is, sticks, whatever. And the object is to get across the line, steal the bacon. Um, but <laughs> If, if, if you crossed, if your team, as soon as you crossed the line onto the other team's side, if you got tagged, you had to freeze. So it's right? like, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? What? <laughs> is, is, that, is that an Australian alternative to steal the bacon? I think that's what it is. I think that's the alternative. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Yeah. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? <laughs> Dude, why, why does that sound cooler than steal the bacon? Yeah. Like... I, <laughs> What's the time, Mr. Wolf, is somebody stands over a line and their back's to you and everybody has to creep up behind them to steal something from the back of their legs. And whenever the wolf turns around, it's, it's very similar. Very similar, it sounds like. That sounds, I mean, I wish we would discover that sounds that like, sounds yeah, that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> but that was the objective. And so we were playing Steal the Bacon. Yes. And I remember we were, we were, I think I was 10 and she was nine. And I was in sixth grade, she was in fifth grade. And I remember just seeing her and just that, I just, you know, it, I was it's watching the game. He was right. playing. Right. I was you were game and cheering I was in school because I've been in the school for like five years at that point And he was new. And that was his first day that oh. I saw him. Oh, like, love at first sight. And, and that was it. And it's funny because like, uh, even her parents, they were like, Wait, you, you guys 10 years old. I'm all, yeah, I'm all, she, she was my first, I mean, not, not even kidding. My first legit crush. And we were 10 years oh. old and playing, playing steal the bacon. And, 
Um, you know, we dated in high school and, and funny story, the, the brief, brief time that we broke up, it was because her friend had uh, a, a crush on me. And as 14 year, 14 year old kids, you, you don't you don't communicate very well. So she had been working, you know, her telling her that I was saying stuff and telling me that she was saying stuff. And so what's funny is when we got back together, we were sitting in the Jeep one time at like one, two o'clock in the morning. Um, and we were sitting there and I just called her like two weeks prior. And and we were, we were sitting there and um, when it came out, when it, when it was discovered that we were being played, we literally got, we literally got engaged two weeks later. That I mean, it, it went it went that fast. Wow. I mean, it was like if, if her friend hadn't done that, we would we probably would have gotten married. We got married at, at uh, twenty one, so it, I mean, we probably would have gotten married uh, quicker than that. So it, it was probably a good thing because you know we're a little, a little older when we got married, and and then when we got married, uh, that was basically a uh, rock and roll kind of thing. Like I had a the bachelor party kind of thing was a. Um, my band at the time had a show at the whiskey in Hollywood. So the night before we played the gig, we went home, slept for about two hours, went to Vegas, got married. And I wore the same leather pants that I wore the night before at the gig. So that's pretty much, that's how we got married. It's a rock and roll as you can, as you can. Get. I wore a black wedding made my mom so upset. Oh, wow. So rock and roll. So, well, did you, as kids, did you buy did you buy Tanya a ring or something as a little kid? I remember when I was a little kid on my first crush, my mum helped me buy a ring and got it engraved, and I gave it to this girl Danielle Walsh, and she laughed at me. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> but you know that man. makes me, that bit, that makes that's hard to hear. Like at 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 my age, hearing that, I'm like, well, that's... She, my mum didn't get her name engraved on it, so I just gave it to Anita. Yeah, <laughs> that was another girl. <laughs> it worked out okay. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay. So the ring thing wasn't my thing. Right. I would, I, I had a very limited. Apparently, at that time, I thought that the only thing you could buy girls was earrings. So she had earrings. Believe me, she had earrings. Um, I bought her. My, I still have them. Yeah, I bought oh, her a wow. pair of. Dolls. I bought her a pair of dolphin earrings, very first pair, and she still wears them on and off to this day. And then after that, I bought her more earrings. And then it, and after a while, it was, you know, there are other things that you can get. I'm like, <laughs> like, like yeah, I, 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 I probably ran the earring thing into the ground. Okay. Uh, when oh, we see, got engaged, see, she bought me a locket. Locket, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, kind of growing my, uh, you know branching out <laughs> by different things. <laughs> so oh uh, yeah I, I i really you know you typical 14 year old just uh, boys don't we're stupid it, it, it's just we do dumb things yeah. you that's know? why we have mums to guide us you know oh yeah that is the truth <laughs> exactly uh, that is so, yeah earrings earrings that was that was my thing and uh, Tanya, you say you were standing there uh, the, doing the, the the bacon thing, and you were you smitten? Were you standing there like ra cheering on? Were you smitten? Tell us a bit about what what was what was it about this guy that uh, attracted you? I honestly can't tell you like what was going through my head, other than he's cute, he's new, and I knew that a friend was standing next to me, and I remember telling him, "I'm going to marry that guy," oh. and I was not, so I didn't know what that meant, but. It happened. Yeah. <laughs> Life was so simple as kids, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was, and you know, it's funny, the childhood home that, um, that I basically, you know, uh, we had a lot of our memories in, um, that was the house that uh, was sold when we came out here to Kentucky with, uh, with, with her family and her parents and stuff. So, I mean, we, we really only left that, childhood home of of hers like maybe three and a half four years ago so always been there yeah. yeah so i'm gathering the both sides of your family get along really well it sounds like they do is is it a a, a big happy <laughs> that look they, you know they they uh <laughs> they do 
They do. Kind of. I, they do. They, they did. They do. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, they do. They, they, um, it, it, it's always, it, every, every, everybody is, is, there's so much history because going back with the homeschool, like her mom used to do a lot of arts and crafts when they would do like the craft fair, you know, my mom would help out and uh, they, they really do like her, her dad and my dad have a lot. Uh, they're very mechanical. Like both, so both of them are there. It seems like some of us were born like right side brain and others left side brain. Like I'm creative. Like I, I, I write music. Uh, I play, you know, other instruments. I, I love tabletop games, you know, I write my own tabletop games. Like there's, there's lots of creative things. She paints, she sews, she plays piano, she sings, you know, she taught, she, you know, taught dance, owned a dance studio. My, our dads, they, they they fix cars right like they they can drywall they 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 do all the things that guy that guys yeah. you know stereotypical have you know have done just i've always been known to do i'm not one of those so it's horrible so when there's something that needs fixing she does it like um i'm i i kid, I kid you not and i'm not afraid to admit it because i'm terrible at it so yeah. i come home one day and we got this barn door because uh, we wanted, you know, we wanted it sliding uh, uh, to open up, separate the room from uh, the main room. And it, it saves space instead of opening up the door. So <laughs> I, I come home. She's got these steampunk looking goggles on, like just just mad <laughs> professor in, in, you know, in, in the front yard. And she's like, I don't know if she was like lacquering it or priming it or sanding it or what she was doing. And I'm like, there, there's there's <laughs> sawdust everywhere. And I'm like what who did who what what who are you like it it's you know it, so it she's very if something's broke she she fixes spackles and paints and you know she she, she jumps in there right with the thick of things if something needs to get done i mean she you know she'll grab a shovel i mean she she's like i'm like it's like i married a dude i mean it's it's you know i, I always tell people that i'm all she, she is she is the the she does everything that I'm horrible at. Girl so power, girl power. Uh, she 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 really is, man. She she <laughs> she's great. Fixing stuff. I mean, I, and I worked for the water department for 14 years, right? So I should know something about you know. <laughs> she's a hate to live no. in, live in your area and have water problems. <laughs> I was so proud of myself for for fixing the toilet when we got out here. Like I, that was like my claim to fame. And I and I watched a YouTube video on how to do it, and it actually worked. But that that is my that's the extent of my construction. Even though I did construction and worked for water department, you know, I'm, we built the fence. Uh, I I didn't I didn't engineer it. I I was I was labor. Uh, I don't. She she was she was the brain power. You were eye candy. Let's just be truthful here. Yeah. It's, it. Hey, can, can, can you work? Can you work? Can you, I told you. I knew. Can you, I'm not. Can you wear these tank top and uh, these uh, booty shorts and uh, help, me, help me with the fence here? Look, it's a beautiful story. As When I was coming up with a title for the show, you know, it was like, well, this is the thing. This I was trying to look for the hook and the hook is that, you know, Obviously, you've known each other for a really long time, so obviously this is why your music works so well together because you, you've been around each other so long, so you're able to feed off each other, which we'll get into, music. But I need to ask both of you the question I ask everybody. The first four questions is, and I'll ask you first, Tanya, because we're going to do this, both of you, we need to get answers. Tanya, what does music mean to you? Oops, right camera. <laughs> Music is a form of expression to me, but it's also a release of um, feelings. Like, lets me release my whatever I'm going through inside. I'm not very good with words. I'm not very good at expressing myself. Um, and I feel like music allows me to do that. Uh, performer at heart. So any kind of performing and art allows me to do that. And I really do enjoy that with music, especially that I get to do it with my husband. And you say, as a, as a vocalist, um, you have trouble expressing yourself with words. Is is it the same when you? I, I'm not, I'm assuming you would you would write lyrics in, in the band as well. Do you? Um, rarely. Rarely. So you so. I, I, well, I work too. 
Yeah. It, the, our carousel album, she actually like I I, I just kind of cleaned up words here or there. Those are basically her lyrics in in carousel and they're they're fantastic lyrics. Um so yeah, she surprised me because a lot of the times the it's it's mostly me who does the music. It, you know, the the, the band is kind of like my you know, baby kind of, you know, kind of vision and um yeah, the carousel album, the lyrics were all were all her. You did a lot of those. It was happening. Well, you are a, you are an incredible singer, Tanya, and I know everybody agrees on this. So you have a, an amazing voice. So uh, I hope as it goes on, we get to hear more of what's going on in your head when you sing. I just love that. So Nate, I'm going to hit you with the same question: What does music mean to you? I, uh, I to be honest, I just hear I hear sounds, and <laughs> it just comes out. Um, no, it you know. It it's just one of those things I think you're you're born with, you know, just a gift that that you know a gift a calling that that you're given, and um, that's just the way it's always been. When I was eight years old, my parents heard me sing, uh, and then they go, "Hey, we're going to sign you up for the, the worship team at church." You know, just go into children's ministry. You know, just to sing. You know, with with uh, the the person who who was playing guitar. I saw them playing guitar. I I'm like, hey, I want to do that. So at ten years old, I picked up guitar and. So it's always been there. And I just, I hear songs. And when I first heard, um, like your background, right? Like rock and metal. I, I heard on just FM radio, my stereo just at, in junior high, you know, when I heard Randy Rhodes for the first time, that was it. That crazy train, uh, hook. That was, that was it. It was all over for me after that. It was, I just loved rock and roll. I loved metal. I loved writing it. I loved playing it. And that's, that's really, I mean, music, obviously there's artistic expression there and it's obviously an outlet. Like I know when I was uh, sick and went, went through a health situation there, uh, music was a big part of uh, our carousel, our carousel album was a big part of getting out those uh, things, uh, getting out a lot of uh, feelings that had kind of been pent up for, for several years. So I think music is, is kind of something you're, you're born with. And I think at the same time for me, it, it releases a lot of um, just emotions and feelings like it does, I think with all of us artists. So uh, it's, it's just, it's been with me for such a long time. It just feels like it's, it's always been there. Absolutely. All right. Um, let's do these two. We'll do this question. Then we'll play another song. I love this one because it tells a lot to me. The, so both of you individual, I'll start again with you, Tanya. The first album that you purchased with your own pocket money and oh. an album that was maybe given to you as a gift. The first one that I bought. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I already know mine. So. It was. Uh, I can't remember the name of the album, but it was the W's. W's. That was a Christian ska band. Um, I was 16 when I got my first stereo that I was allowed to listen to in my own room, and I got that. And then for Christmas, when I got the stereo, my aunt bought me the Phantom of the Opera soundtrack. Oh, nice. Nice. I found the W's here. See, I'm quick. <clears throat> Christian Scarban. Yep. Here we are. Awesome. Yep. Do you still listen to them now? Uh, uh, every once in a great while, I'll put it on. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Nate? Oh, that's it. I remember, uh, you know, it's funny. The stereo that I played this first uh, CD on um, is sitting right in front of me right now because uh, we're just, we're cheap and it still works. And so it's actually <laughs> I, I kind of wired to our, our flat screen in front of us. So I still have it. And I got this when I was like 13, 14 years old. Um, but the first CD that I remember getting, it was Boston. It was Boston. And I remember all more than a feeling peace of mind. I remember, and it just, it sounded so good. I think my dad, got me that that cd um the f first memories i have of of owning something it it, it, it might have been on cassette 
and it might have been um there was a, a a local band they were called seventh sign and they were kind of post 80s hair metal it was it was a little more uh, it was a little harder a little edgier and they had a three song demo and i i remember i remember very early on listening to that but yeah my first cd that i remember actually i don't remember if i bought it or if my dad uh gave it to me for christmas but it, it, it was boston nice Thank you, Mr. Smith, for the kind super chat. Remember, you can super chat if you want. Never expected, but it, it, it always helps. We're going to play a song right now. And uh, this just, I don't know, kind of ties in because I'm going to play That Boy. It's not a video clip, but, you know, we, we start out with, you know, there's that boy there. And so let, let's play this and then we'll come back and talk about it. So, folks, strap in, have a good time, get yourself a drink, relax, because we got another hour and a half to go. Let's do this. This is That Boy by Crimson Crux. You know what I'm going to say? Let's ooja. Oh, yeah. gets me excited when I have an artist on here and I'm playing their music and off camera I can see them singing the words <laughs> because yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it excites yeah. me because it means you care, you know, and there's, uh, there are people out there who go, what, you listen to your own music 
And it's like, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Like, if I didn't like my own music, yeah. didn't want to listen to it, I think I need a lobotomy. What's going on? This this album, I do. I I I, I put this album on repeat because I we both of us really enjoy the way these songs come out. I feel like this is the first time in my whole musical journey that that the songs actually came out where like I enjoy listening to them. So I yeah we we do listen to our, our own album on repeat. So See, I was saying to you before the show, though, I went back through your back catalog, and I really like a lot of your folk stuff as well, too. I, I, right. I was shocked, oh, I I, you. I was shocked you. that you didn't send me one of them to play because <laughs> I, I, just, I love seeing the progression of artists, how they change and that kind of thing because it, it is important, like, you know, you, to see where people come from to understand where they are today. Yeah. You know, so I, I really sure. love that stuff. Um, let's say hello to everybody here. That was beautiful. Very 50s inspired there. I felt like getting a milkshake, some roller yep. skates and going to the local thing and, and and being with my school sweetheart. There we go. I'm turning Please. into an American right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's say hello to everybody in the chat. So, folks, you know the deal in the chat. Please type something so I can find you in the chat so I can say hello to you. Yes, I know you You jumped the gun there, Chad, and wrote something. There you go. See, he got to me before I could even say it. Chad Freeman, <laughs> Hugh Caldwell, Thomas Christ, Fat Panda Cat, Pookie, hello, Pookie, Queen B, Feisty Feather, Mr. Smith, uh, Legs 11, Ali's here, Barry Glenn, Gary Hubs, um, Falcon Blueser, what's going on? on uh lizard day we got dr zorders in the house i need to do i oh, should i do it i should do it let's do it dr zorders got to do the sound effect for dr <laughs> zorders uh rainfield music hello ed bermetal uh joe glenn i think i got already chris lane senior wholesome music says chris lane senior and he would know because he's very unwholesome let me tell you that um <laughs> kid kane music hello kid kane what is happening we've also got uh, rise of dark leela something something um i know there's lots of other people here because we've got about oh, there were we've got 37 people i think last time i looked um, so thank you all for hanging out. If I've missed you, I apologise and I'm just making sure. I've got most of you. Uh, Cold Acre, there's Cold Acre. Hello, Cold Acre. What's happening? All right. I'll try and keep up. Um, SM Borthwick. G'day, Scotty. Uh, I'll try and keep up. Gortium as well. There's Gortium. East Virginia Studios. Awesome. If I if I see somebody new, I'll try and catch up during the rest of the show. But this is my favourite question I get to ask people, everyone who comes on the show. As a kid, in your home, who were some of the artists that you used to hear played in the house from your family? And how, we have a term here in Australia, daggy, which is a bit like, I don't know, geeky kind of, how embarrassing. <laughs> were there any embarrassing things that you listened to, that your family listened to? With a B or a G? Daggy? Daggy. Dag yeah, daggy. It's dag, I dag is the... The, ir the irony is dag is the thing that hangs off a sheep's bum. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it's, but in Australia, it's a term of like oh. endearment, like, you know, uh, cringe but lovable. Oh. <laughs> oh man, like, this escalated quickly. Yeah, like, know, we're, 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 but it's, it's a good thing in Australia. It's, it's like a good that. thing, but yeah, it's a. Uh, but yeah, just kind of cringe, you know. But but cool at the same I, time. Oh, that's funny. You you want to? <laughs> my mom used to listen to Anne Murray. Oh, on oh. Repeat. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> my carpenter host. <laughs> so is, uh, yeah. And then my dad loved the Beach Boys. I mean, I, yeah. that's not bad, but yeah. he loved the Beach Boys. Beach, so a lot of Beach yeah. Boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the Beach Boys, it's funny about the Beach Boys because it, a lot of people just remember them for their, you know, very surfy stuff, but they went down some pretty strange paths later on in life, you know? Yeah. Yep. When, what was it, Brian Wilson? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah late, Pet later sounds. on. Yeah. Yep. They really got uh, Sergeant Pepper's ish. Uh, later on yeah. with stuff for sure yeah i love the beachy stuff like i i i love it, it, you know what's funny it's always like ro who are you a fan of like you know rolling stones beatles like for me it's always it's beach boys yep. like I, I i would pick beach boys over either one of them so what about Sorry. your your household nate what was a uh, play oh uh what i growing up okay so my my ah, man my dad is who got 
my brother and I into metal. My brother and I were in a band like we talked about for for a long time. And my my dad was hard rock, you know, uh, you know, metal. But there was a country phase that happened oh. when, when I was and I actually like country. I like I don't want to say real country, but the country I like is the, the not not <laughs> not the CMT, you know, pop no, no. country. I I like Dwight Yoakam. I like Randy Travis, a Clint Black. Like I I love that kind of, I, Dwight Yoakam's my favorite, but the when growing up in our household, my dad kind of did this um urban cowboy thing for a while, and um, <laughs> you know, he we we had horses and you know, we lived in the high desert in Southern California, so you know, we weren't you know, we would dirt and Joshua trees and you know, everything. So they they I remember them going to uh, um not honky tonk so it was kind kind of a honky tonk and uh and uh they uh they actually saw like clint black play live before he he made it big and they went and so i remember dwight yokum playing in the house i remember all of these country western art like i would say like uh 80s early 90s like country uh western artists and then pretty much by the time we were junior high it was it was hard rock metal so I, I love it all. I, I love, I love, you know, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, you know, I love country. I love every, everything. I'm not, not so much of a rap and hip hop guy, but I, uh, yeah, you too. know, yeah. that, that's, I, I, that's, that was my, my parents' background. You know, I, I remember growing up and, and the cowboy boots and the, I've got some incriminating pictures too. So um, that, that, that's what was playing in our house was, it was Western yeah. and it was, yeah, it, 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 I've seen them. <laughs> I might have some of them. It, it wasn't. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> Just hold on to Cowboy. those ten. You're good for blackmail later on. Trust me. <laughs> Cowboy hat, flannel shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I did. I was Cowboy Crux. I did. It was the whole nine yards. It was, <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. Kid, so yeah, I was yeah. always dressed like I was going yeah. to a 1940s yeah. I, club and doing swing dance. I think she, I think she's a little more rock and roll. She's it, it's weird, like you know, it, it maybe <laughs> later on, you know, you, the hard rock influence is there, but I I think she's more rock and roll than I am. So <laughs> awesome! Hello, hippie in the chat as well, and Laurie's mishmash. Welcome aboard. I see you. Um, all right, so I'm interested. This one really interested me. So. Uh, I'm going to hit you up first, Tanya, because you have such a wonderful, wonderful voice. Um, so lessons. Was there, did you uh, have lessons at school? Was there a point when you had lessons? Was it part of your music curriculum at school? Because we have a lot of music here in our schools. And uh, if not, uh, when did you want to start singing and what was the process to get your voice so beautiful? Uh, okay, well, let's go way back. Yeah. Um, I've always been a fan of music. I like opera and I like, you know, sing along songs and musicals. And um, I would just sing from the time I was young and we were homeschooled. Um, I think I was homeschooled a little bit earlier than he was. Mm -hmm. And my mom would always encourage me to sing in whatever productions the school was putting on or the church was putting on. And I think I was in high school, like eighth or ninth grade, somewhere in there. Um, I did a play at the with some of the students from a local high school and the um, music theater, I think it was the music theater instructor came up to me and my mom afterwards and asked why I wasn't in his class. And it was because I was homeschooled. So I wasn't allowed to take that class oh. and uh, he recommended a vocal teacher for me. And so I started taking vocal lessons with an emphasis on opera. My mom wanted me to be a singer really badly wanted me to be a singer because I wanted to be a dancer and she didn't like that. <laughs> so she really pushed yep. me to do um, uh, music for college and I almost won a scholarship. And the only reason they told me that I didn't win was because I was too young. Um, I was a freshman in high school and they were looking for seniors. Right. So I could like, which was still fun. Um, but yeah, I focused on opera all of that time. And I never really thought I would do anything with music other than opera. I did um, worship teams and Nathan and I sang together from mm -hmm. the time we were really young. I think we were 12 or 13. We started yeah. singing together um, at church and at school things. 
and and then I kind of gave up music for a while no and he brought it back he brought it back into my life that is rad that is so good how did you bring this how how how, how did you bring it back what did what what was it Yes, do tell us. How did I bring yes. it? Because I, I have no idea how I brought it he's back. Sitting, he's sitting there looking shocked, going, what is this part yeah. of the story? Is this new? Uh, well, yeah. He was in mean. this band, and, um, you know, they would do their tours and different things. And I was like, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Like, there's so much that they have to put in to be in this band. They have to work so hard. And I mean, a bunch of young guys in their 20s doing like early 20s doing these long band practices they would practice yeah. for like six hours yeah. something yeah. Eight hours and yeah. um yeah all of us wives would be sitting in the living room like are they done yet like i don't know i would have loved yeah. <laughs> brutal it was brutal and so he ended up leaving that band and it took a year to kind of figure out what he wanted to do and he started working on something he goes well i have lyrics and i don't have a singer could you learn these lyrics and then we'll record them and I can give them to whatever singer does this. And I was not interested. I was like, yeah, I'm an opera singer and this is folk music. I don't know how to do this. So I sang them and then we tried to get a singer and it didn't work out. I forgot about that. That's right. <laughs> it, she she about practiced that. it a few times. That's it just right. wasn't working. That's right. And then he goes, well, why don't you just sing them and we'll record them and you can just sing them. And I had a horrible stage, right? Like, horrible that was one of the reasons why i gave up music was my stage fright got so bad i couldn't stand on stage without shaking to the point where i couldn't sing i had no control over you're the voice. vibrato uh really thick when <laughs> natural vibrato nerd. fear yeah, yeah. So the vibrato lots of vibrato yeah <laughs> i would drop the mic and everything like i just had no control over it and so i i just quit and i was like yeah i can record a video uh an album I, that's cool as long as i'm not to perform and you know then <laughs> <for it. laughs> yeah. it didn't happen boom so yeah he, he broke me into singing while taking me to these high school you know we went to the high school christian clubs to kind of sponsor them and help them and um i got to kind of practice in front of them which was nice and then right after that, it was like, oh, we're going to perform in front of this huge church that has hundreds of people. Oh, we're going to perform at this stadium at a, <laughs> at a football game. And I'm yeah. terrified. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and then yeah. all these different big events that he kept taking me to perform. And it, <laughs> yeah. I got uh, kind of used to it. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like, But yeah. it's always in the back of my mind that it's there. Yeah. But I really love it now. Actually, I've never had more fun doing music than... Yeah. Especially this last album, we had so much fun doing it. Yeah, I think hearing it, hearing you say all that now, I'm like, wow, I kind of threw you into the fire there. <laughs> I'm like, I never really, I never really looked at it like that. I'm like, wow, I really kind of just went here. You go. <laughs> typical guitar, <laughs> typical guitarist, really. I never yeah, 100%. Would have come back to it. <laughs> Can I ask Tanya? Was there anything in particular that helped you get over that? Because, like, see, I when I went to school, we had actually had a singing teacher at school, and we had a performance teacher. And one of the best things I ever learned as a singer was to look for an inanimate object on stage and sing to that. And for the longest time, when I first started performing, I would just sing to a pole. I'd look for a, a poster or something. And that really helped get over and start to actually look at people. And unfortunately, the first time I did look at somebody on stage, they just gave me the bird right up the front. And I was like, I think, I'm, I, think I was having more fun staring at the posters. But, you know, but was, there, was there anything in particular that helped you get over the line? Um, oh, man. Oh, that's I don't funny. know if it was anyone. I did try that. Someone had mentioned that to me because when we were performing with the groups that went to the high schools, they all figured it out. I, I kept telling them, like, I have really bad stage fright. Could you, like, pray for me before I go on stage? Cause I don't want to pass out, you know. Um, I had a habit of needing a bucket on the side of the stage because I was that nervous. Oh, um, wow. Wow. Bad. So, Did you uh, ever use it? Once, yeah. I, I did not know this. It I... wasn't Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, I never, I never heard anything about this. It, uh, wow. the dance um, it was before I got married and my teacher was um, known for making me do things I did not want to do. And one of them was singing a song and it was 
hears a mic go out there and sing. And I had no time to prepare and had a full on panic attack while singing the song went off stage. And yeah, yeah, not fun. Wow. <laughs> but um, so yeah. Night. Night's like but now for people to pray for me. Is, I never <laughs> knew that. And then when we started performing a lot, I made it my habit before I went on stage, I would just go hide somewhere before we went on. Um, just me and myself and I'd pray and I'd be like, you know, Lord, just let this not be about me. Because when I start focusing on me and how I sound and how my voice is and if I'm in control, that's when I lose control. So let it be about you and let it be about the music and let it be about the people listening and not about me. So and that helped getting the focus off of myself and worrying about me and whether or not I was doing a good job that really made a difference for me. So that became my habit before every performance. And I think that really did make a difference. It's fascinating, you know, with nerves and, and stuff like that, because some of the biggest artists in the world, if you listen to interviews and, and, and somebody is intelligent enough to ask these kind of questions about anxiety and, and nerves as a performer, some of the biggest artists in the world, their best performances were the ones that before they went on stage, they were throwing up and they would just... <laughs> So yeah. anxious and because embracing that anxiety and stuff really can accelerate a performance and take you to a place you didn't really know. And these days, anxiety is a thing we look at and go like, ah, I don't want anxiety. And it's like, I don't know, man, sometimes it can fuel you. You can take it and just yeah. run with it because it's it's like butterflies on steroids. That's what it really is. You know, it all depends on how you yeah. look at things, you know. So, yeah. Moving you could to, definitely, yeah, it could push you to do things that you didn't think you could do. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Nate, lessons, music, school. How did it begin? What made you pick up an instrument? What made you do these things? Tell us, please. It it all started uh, eight years old. Just I coming home. I think we were coming home from the mall, and uh, we we were driving up. Uh, we had this pass called the Cajon Pass, and. Um, we were driving up the Cajon Pass and I was just, apparently I was singing in the back seat and uh, my parents go, do, do you want to sing? Do you want to try the the children's worship team at church? And I'm like, sure. And so I was a ham at that age, you know, I mean, just, you know, attention. <laughs> and uh, what a show, you know, I, I, I always, I tell people I'm, I am the most extroverted introvert you'll ever meet. Like I am, I, I'm the, I can be the life of the party when I'm out, but leave me alone. Like, like I want to be home and left alone, but when I'm out, it's, and, and it was that way at, at that age. And so, um, you know, so I, I started singing and the guy that was playing guitar, I was playing the worship songs. I, I was, you know, he let me kind of mess around on it and I'm like, I really liked it. So I was 10 years old when I picked up the acoustic and, uh, by the um, end of that year, uh, I think at the sixth grade graduation, I was up on stage playing, uh, you know, play, playing the worship songs. And, uh, and so from there just kind of morphed into a 13, 14 years old, grabbing my, um, uh, hearing really, you know, like Randy Rhodes and, and those artists. And I'm like, I want to play electric. Like, <laughs> like I want to do rock and roll. And so it went from rhythm guitar to electric guitar. So 13, four, pretty much from like 13 to 16 years old. I was just in my room, garage bands. I mean, just really trying to hone those skills. And then that morphed into when I was about 17 years old, I, I got my first opportunity with a local band that had um, some uh, TV and radio exposure. And I mean, stuff they had already written, but I jumped in into that band. And then uh, that's kind of where the musical journey uh, kind of into uh, the industry kind of started was there at 17. And that really morphed into when the new metal scene came on. Uh, it came on the scene in the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, the PODs and the Limp Biscuits and, and kind of that thing. And so, um, yes, as much as I, I'm not a, a, a rap hip hop band that, that I was in a rap core band at that time. So, uh, it, it, I still look back and am like that, that was wild. Um, <laughs> but you know what the guys, the guys were great. And, uh, I learned, I, I was, I was an 18 year old kid in that band and the guys I was jamming with were mid thirties, like, you know, late thirties. And I, that was the first time I learned recording. We went to a, uh, we went to a studio in Vegas called Sun Song Studios. And um, they had recorded like Christina Aguilera's, uh, I think Christmas album at the time. And to me, I'm just wide eyed, stupid, you know, 18 year old kid going, 
<laughs> I'm in a recording studio. <laughs> and I knew nothing. I was young and dumb. I mean, I walked, I mean, I could play to a click and I mean, I, I, I had, I had, you know, I, I had, I don't want to say an advanced skill set, but at that time I'd been, yeah, the, the hair was, it was horrible. I used to die. I just, I died, died red. It was, it was, it was, it was his new metal. If you could possibly get chains, it was, I, 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 I had, I look, I, I look like a cross between like a cholo rock. So it looked something like something. Deftones. I look, I look like somebody from Deftones. Like it was, it was weird. It was a weird era. And so, you know, I, I'm there in the studio and, and so that kind of, you know, morphed into after, a, after that band, it, that kind of morphed into um, a band I was in with my brother for seven years. And that's where I got into the black and death metal scene. And like we were talking, a lot of the riffs that we use here, some of the inverted chords that I use, I picked up some of that from a style that I kind of, um, I don't want to say creative, but there's a style that I, I kind of picked up on um, that became unique to to eventually to how I played. And I learned that listening to like Immortal and some of some of the, the Norwegian uh, black metal bands and stuff, stuff that was more um, storytelling, galloping kind of riffs and stuff. And so that's kind of where I, I blended that with kind of 80s hair metal that like Thomas had had made mention um when he heard hit the lights that it had kind of that motley crew kind of and i went arena rock i go that's exactly what i wanted to create with this album was just that not straight 80s metal but i wanted that like arena just hard rock anthemic that's what we wanted with the big sweeping choruses and but that's pretty much where it all started was eight years old singing and then acoustic and then moving into new metal and then black metal. And then uh, we started off, as you mentioned, with the folk stuff. Um, we abs I absolutely love that era that that we do. We had so much fun. We got to we got to do so many cool things in that era. I love the, the, the steampunk that we did with uh, Of the Times and Seasons EP. Um, you know, that was all like folk, folk rock, steampunky. And, and uh, um, from there, we, we pretty much morphed into hard rock and that, that that's kind of something I always want. I never got to actually write the hard rock kind of music that I grew up with. And so we're getting to do that with this album. And I kind of dragged her along and she just, <laughs> she, where she started all of a sudden, like I, you could see from our, our first album, she's soprano way through the rafters vibrato. And you listen to this album and she's just a powerhouse. I mean, you can hear the power and the strength and the confidence and it's like it's night and day. I'm like, who are you? I mean, she's there. There's just this power <laughs> woman vocalist. I'm going, man. I got lucky. Like, I mean, I feel blessed. I feel lucky. I'm like, you know, this this is awesome. She she's come like just an amazingly long way into, but that that's 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 where it all started for me and for us. I think um, with you. Well, we are all blessed. And speaking of that folk era, this is what I don't tell artists. I get to pick a song every show and I'm playing <laughs> one of those. So let's go back in time a little bit, everybody. So I hope you're all doing well in the chat. We're going to play this one. They, these two didn't know I was going to do this. This is Crimson Crux a fair while ago. And this is called Scarred.
What a wicked clip too. <laughs> wicked video. It's just so good. So Vic, good. Vic, Vic, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much. And all the comments too. We were just, I mean, I think we're con continually humbled every time we, we get on these panels and live stream. Everybody's just so accepting and supporting. We, we appreciate it. Um, Vic uh, Mendoza from Vic's Cover Art. Um, he shot our first three music videos. Um, I think Not of the Night, that one scarred. And then uh, there was a cover we did, Andrew Sisters by Mir Vista Shane. Um, so uh, I think that was the second video we had ever shot with him. Um, we actually, um, I reached out to him for our video premiere that's coming up uh, uh, after, after this show. And uh, Vic actually... Um, edited and did our uh music video coming up so uh, we're really excited to do those videos with him and then get to collaborate with him on this this next one that's coming out tonight so um yeah that i we we have so much fun he's so cinematic and and i mm -hmm. think that's you know uh, a lot of people use ai and that's fine our thing is just I, we love films and movies and cinema so our our, our yeah our, our videos tend to, to be more cinematic that's just kind of our our palette when I, I'm just finding the part of the video. When I first saw the video, I was like, in this clip, you kind of look a little bit like Camp G, May. <laughs> With the head, Camp, do you not know who Camp G, May is? G, May. He had the, he had mean, Funk Fest on last week. There's a little bit of G, May in this video clip. Anyway, if you go and see G, May, you'll probably see it. Does anybody it's else think that? that <laughs> it's funny that you say that because do you know how many times? The, okay, so. I am par I'm apparently Mr. Doppelganger. <laughs> I, when, when I had this haircut, if I had a nickel for every time people said, you look like Snape from Harry Potter, or they would go, you look like Keanu Reeves, or, or yeah, when, the, when you had the thing. Yeah, yeah. When, when I was younger, I got Chris Angel all the time. If you look like it, my earlier photos, but yeah, Snape was the one that I got. Yeah, you look like Snape from Harry Potter. And I go, it's the haircut. It's it's there. I just saw Camp G May. G May is awesome. Don't worry, it's not, no, a, it's not a slide or anything like that. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. It's got some stuff. Oh, because look, I have, and most people know my faith and stuff here on this channel. I'm a metheist. I, I don't hold any uh, any dislike for anybody and their belief and all this kind of stuff, but I am very fascinated in this kind of stuff because many artists I've had on, this is interview number 140. There's a consistent theme throughout the artists I've had over the years on this show who grew up playing music in church, right? It's it, it, even people who aren't religious anymore, who, who don't follow the, that particular religion, they still have that. So, And you both mentioned that that was a place where singing was important and helped you grow. I want to know about your faith, about your ministry, about how important this is to tie in with your music. Please do tell. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you know, our our faith is is everything. You know, I my parents, um, for, you know, there's a lot of people that once, as we refer to, you know, become saved. That's that's just the, the terminology. Um, when they discover, like, you know, we accepted, uh, you know, we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and um, the thing is, is like, I don't have a history before that, you know, like yep. there's there, there are people that do. And, you know, like my, my dad does my mom, you know, my dad, you know, had had done, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff when he was younger. And so being raised in that, you know, always being being raised um, in in a church and just having a relationship with 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 Christ, I that is the foundation for all of our, all of our music and songs. And we always try to do it in a way where it's not, I'm not, I'm not, we're not, we're not here to Bible bash, you know, because that is the fastest way. I don't think that's the way Jesus would have, would have done it either. You know, you, you just slapping someone over the head with a Bible and just, you know, you're, you're not this, you're he not didn't. that. And, he didn't do that. No, I've read it. No, and We, right. You know, it's, and it's like the Bible says, you know, that um, be ready to give an answer for the hope that's within you. It says with meekness and fear. So basically, what does that say? When you're sharing the gospel, 
don't do it with arrogance or pride. Do it with meekness. Be humble about it, you know. And there are going to be people that disagree, agree and disagree. And they're, they're, I, I know there are things in the Bible that people definitely disagree on. But, you know, God is a God of love, but he's also a, a God of order. And, and it's kind of like, you know, if you believe in the Bible, it's like you have to believe every word that God said is, 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 you know, the, um, inerrant word of God, or it's like either all or none of it. And so, but where I'm going with that is, you know, with our music and ministry, that's our cornerstone, like our foundation. So we have music, um, that is, is not bold in a Bible bashing way, but I think from a personal standpoint, like on this album, you know, we have a song called wake Em up and it's about revival. And, you know, and it's coming from just a, a personal standpoint, you know, same thing with we have a song called Ghost. It's about faith. I was struggling one night and I'm just like, Lord, I don't understand. I was going through some things there. A lot of the health issues that the things that happened to me uh, with the medical industry and um, I was just struggling. Like, I'm like, Lord, where are you? I was, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I was angry. I was, I was just. Like, Lord, I, I mean, tell him, like, Lord, I hate you. I don't want anything to do with you. And, and I was speaking out of anger, and he really just silenced me one day. And he he brought me to these scriptures and comforted me, you know, and, and really took me on a journey and grew and stretched my faith. And so we wrote a song, Ghost, about it. But we also have songs that, you know, like that boy, it's about us. We have songs about Hit the Lights, it's about temptation. And we have, you know, song Bad Day, you know, just have a bad day. Um, and so we we try to do a combination of both. We just, we, like well, the ministry we were doing uh, to touch on, you know, uh, you were saying being interested about our ministry and what we do. So um, back at home, there was uh, somebody who approached us um, to reach out. There were these Christian clubs at the high schools and they really, there wasn't a whole lot of support there. Some of them didn't have, some of them were thriving and doing well. Other schools didn't have any clubs at all. And so um, we formed uh, this group. It was uh, the Revival Tour. And we went in and we basically, we shared the gospel. You know, we, we shared Jesus with them and and we encouraged them because they, they were already having Bible studies and, and doing their thing after school. And so where the ministry kind of came in with our music was that, you know, we kind of came in and just, we were pretty much just there for them if they needed uh, any kind of mentorship. And, and a lot of them were doing really good um, themselves. But, um, and so we, we had uh extra supplies right if they needed uh bibles or if they needed prayer and the big thing that we that they allowed us to do was come into their schools and this was so cool we actually got to go into their performing arts centers and put on after show concerts uh and it was really really cool to be able to go into a school and just share our faith and 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 have others learn who 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 jesus was you know to us and 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 people that accepted him and um and then and then that moved to uh like the, the fairgrounds and then it moved to the, the local baseball stadium and it just really blew up and that's where the ministry side came into our music was was that and um so to this day we still given my whole situation i we don't get to perform live really anymore or, or a whole lot. Um, but the ministry is still there in the lyrics. And I, I think it's like what any good artist does. They write what is personal to them. Right. And that's absolutely our, our faith is, is our foundation. And so again, we try to write that in a non Bible bashing way. We try to write from more of a personal perspective. Like this is where we're coming from and not beat you over the head with it. So, you know, that's, 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 that's where our faith and ministry plays into what we do. It really is the cornerstone and the foundation of, uh, it, like you said, you know, us growing up in church. And I think just having that you know, like the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's, that's where we find, that's where we find our strength. And, um, and, and like in, in the book of Romans, Romans, it says, you know, the gifts and calling of God are ir irrevocable. And, and, and that's where I'm tying into when I said earlier that I, I feel like we're, we're born with it. I feel like that gift was given and it's irrevocable, which means it can't be taken back. That's, that's <laughs> yours. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, I'm Nate, you, God put the gift of song and guitar and gave, Tanya vocals and so our faith really is the the cornerstone of our music and um 
you know, and that's where the ministry side comes in. So, yeah, no, I, thanks for asking, you know, we, we don't get that question uh, a whole lot. So it, it was, I'm really excited that you gave us the opportunity to share that. I always do. I, I've had so many Christian artists on this show and some of them I didn't realize until like 10 minutes before the show, but it is, a, is an ongoing thing. And, you know, my thing's always been, man, <laughs> Believe what what gets you through, really. It, it, it doesn't matter to me. My question too, and I, I've asked this of many artists on here, we live in a world at the moment where, and I'm not just talking about Christianity or there's a lot of hate coming from everywhere. Oh, everywhere. sure, sure. And it's yeah. hard. It's hard wherever you come from to have your voice heard and say, hey, I'm not a hateful piece of shit because there's a lot of people out there using faith, sexuality, gender, everything to, to yeah. create hate because we're fed hate, we're fed nastiness, that's, and they want to keep true. us yeah. fighting so we don't see yep. them pocketing all the money. So, uh, you know, how do you, how do you go about in the modern era being people of faith and seeing so much of this dog shit noise going on and, and, and be seen through the noise as like, hey, we, we are love. Tanya, can you ask, answer me that? Go for, it. Go for it. I feel like that is really what fuels us to keep going is, you know, we were raised and, and believe this because this is what our Bible says is that um, God is love. And we're supposed to love everyone. We are all his children. And why would we want to hate something that is made in love. So we're supposed to share God's love with every person, regardless of who they are or where they came from or, or what lifestyle they choose. We still are supposed to show them love. And there are a lot of people who don't know that no matter what faith they are, or don't even realize sometimes that they're yeah. showing that because they've been programmed to believe that something that you don't understand should be hated or feared. And we're supposed to love everyone. We're, we're supposed to spread that love and show that love, not just, um, in our everyday life, but in our relationships. And, and, and for us, it's, it's in our music to share with people that, you know, God is love and he loves you no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation. And you don't always feel it. I mean, you can hear it in our yeah. last album in Carousel. He's right. I did do a lot of that the writing. An, it was and an angry was album. Angry. It was an angry album. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the song an Carousel album. is my baby. I was mad. I was like crying and yelling when I wrote that. And I didn't write the music. He writes the music. But I wrote the, the lyrics to that. And I, it was a question. It was why. Why are we going through this? Why is this allowed? Why? we get to this point and why am I questioning everything I've ever known and ever believed and ever yeah. loved at this point? Why am I being allowed to get to that point that I question? And what gets me through is knowing that no matter what I go through, no matter what we go through, God's love is still there. So even if we're struggling, even if we're angry, even if we're failing miserably at what we're trying to do, which is share God's love. Um, it's still there. And it is really hard to go through the world and see that there are a lot of people that don't do that. And as believers, as Christians who believe that, we don't want to bash others for not sharing that love. All we can do is show them how to share that love and hope that they follow in step and do the same. I, I couldn't agree more. The, 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 overcome by showing love back. There's, I've been through the ringer on, on, you know, and had so even before the show today, I got an email uh, before the show tell, telling me to go die. And I laugh at it now and just go, that's awesome, my friend, because it just shows who you are. And, uh, you know, all I've got back to you is good luck. I really hope you get through whatever it is you're going through at the moment because yeah, it's you, it's not affecting me, right? No. Shower them with that's yeah, really yeah. All you can and th that's not even. We've been said yeah. horrible things to us. Absolutely, I, I understand that too. Show love when you when you do show love and when you do shine and when you are a happy person. People will do anything they can to find fault in you and blame you and try to tear you down. And all you can do is focus on God is love. Therefore, I'm going to love all of His people. 
And look, it's one of the things, and one of the reasons I want to have you on too. There's so many reasons I want to have you on, but I do see that in you. I've seen, I listen to your music, I hear your message, I've seen you on panels, and I get that. You know, I get that you, you guys are, you know, not from that camp. That the, the there's a there's a camp of people, but no matter who, who just they just want to be angry at something, and and it's sad. Yeah. Hopefully, they can uh, overcome it because they're only doing themselves a disservice. We're going to play another song. To uh, let's do it. Kisses in the dark. What is this? What is this song I'm about to play? All right. So th- I can answer this one because it's me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when when, uh, when I was going through that hell situation, um, th- th- there were we found out later on after the PTSD and other things that 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 we discovered um, there there was. Um, there, uh, it's funny that comment that mentioned monster. Uh, that that's that was I, it was comment commenting on something else, but that comment is it ties in perfectly here. So, um, when my guts were uh, uh, traumatized and and we were trying to get things back to functional, I, I had leaky gut. I had neurotox. I had stuff leaking out, and they you know when it gets into your brain, it becomes neurotoxins. You're literally you are lit- you literally act like Jekyll and Hyde, and um. I would, I would yell and scream and throw stuff. And we found out later on that during that time, it wasn't my fault. There were, there was an actual like medical explanation. Like I had things leaking out into my system and it was messing with my brain and, and everything like that. And so I wrote the song just about this Jekyll and Hyde and the song is me. I mean, it is this Jekyll and Hyde personality of like, I, you know, uh, I'm a freak show, baby. Can you help me, please? And then the pre-course is when I scream and shout and prowl about and the other me comes crawling out. You know, I'm like, it's talking about me and how I acted during that time because there were things I couldn't help. And I, you know, I still feel bad about some of the things that I said. And it also goes to show that marriage is a marathon and you're going to have those those times. She stuck with me through thick and thin and i think there i gave her every reason where she could have left when i was going through that situation because there were very extreme we we just i tried basically for eight months not dying over literally over and over and over and over and um there were things happening inside my body that we understood later and she just she pushed through it and stuck I, i i wouldn't be here if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, for first and foremost for, for the Lord. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. And so, so kisses is about, it's me. It, it's, it, it's about me when I was going through that, this ugly Jekyll and Hyde split personality that was coming out of me. So yeah, that's, that's what it's about. All right. Let's let the music tell the story. Uh, before I do hit it, I did forget to mention, thank you 15th band for the super chat. You rock my friend. Um, all right, let's do it. Are you ready to oge? We're ready to oge. Let's oge. Let's play the song. Jade, shut up. Let's go. <laughs>
So good, so good. Who did the makeup? Who did the makeup? <laughs> can, can you come move into my house and do my makeup for a video <laughs> clip as well? <laughs> Another. I just write. The, I, I write the songs. She brings them to life. Another skill, <laughs> man. What, what would you do without this amazing woman in your band, Nate? You'd be screwed. You'd be Not screwed. much. <laughs> yeah, I would be. I'm telling you it. The, when people watch the music videos, I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, you guys have no idea how much like it it would not look this way. I mean, she went all the way down to L.A. to pick up the black fabric that we used to kind of black everything out and just props. And I mean, that comes from the 12 years of owning the dance studio, you know, just we have extra props left over. And there are things that, you know, that the, all the you should see some of the makeup that that she did on um when they went to competition and uh did alice in wonderland and uh they did um nightmare before christmas, nightmare before christmas. i mean she she's just she's an artist she's a star and that was one of my goals today because i've seen you on a lot of shows and, and you talk a lot nate i do <laughs> so I do. today my goal was to, <laughs> to get this lovely rose to speak a little I bit more <laughs> I appreciate that because a lot of the times with the music, I, I think the questions are hard to answer because it's mostly me who writes it. Yep. And I love that the questions you're asking are actually they're directed for her. And and there's we don't get a whole lot of that because it's, it's mostly music based. So thank you for that. I'm just making it up on the spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how I work. All right. Let's talk about like uh, I did have marked here about your health, but you pretty much explained it there, you know. It's a common theme here across the community. Not everybody, of course, but there is a common theme throughout this community of health. And that's why I do a lot of shows in the past. We had our we, we All Rise Together series I did through the inconvenience in 2020 and through 2021, talking about depression, anxiety, all, so much stuff about uh, physical illness and all this. Because I think it's important to talk about this stuff as musicians because it, it impacts our life every day. Um, so I, I really thank you for being candid and talking about your health issues and I'm so glad you have been over, able to overcome them. Yeah. Cause, uh, even if like, like, even myself, I will never overcome mine. Mine is for life, but you know, you find ways to get around it and march forward and be better because as soon as you let illness and fear and all that stuff become a thing and let it win, yeah, you, <laughs> there's no point. You you are dead, essentially, you know. Let's talk Gotta about finding going. this community. How the hell did you find us? 
See, this is why I keep talking because a lot of it, it there's, I'm the only one that can answer this because she's over here doing real estate and, and busy. And I'm like, these questions, I'm like, I, I, I've like, got a real I'm estate only... question next. Don't worry. No. Yeah. Now, okay. if, you, if you did that, she'll keep you here till next Thursday. But, awesome. So yeah, the, 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 it started with, as, as it always does, it starts with Pete. The, um, ga the gateway drug, Pete Johns. Is the community gateway drug? Yes, and so when we when we started recording ourselves, it started off in GarageBand, right? And um, I think in 2018, this is when I was really sick, and and we hadn't, uh, you know, even begun to address, uh, you know, getting the procedure that 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 helped. And um, I was sitting there on the couch, and I had this music, and this is started with our storyteller EP. And so I got on YouTube. How do I record in GarageBand? Well, <laughs> I mean, that's Pete's channel. So the SEO pumped out Pete's channel, and I'm glad it did. And so I, I, I spent probably more hours watching Pete's videos than I did mixing that album. And I spent a lot of time mixing it, but I spent even more time watching his tutorials. And um, so we, we go back, back to watching Pete's stuff back in 2018. And so a couple of months ago, I, uh, I somehow stumbled onto, you know, uh, your music live and he kept saying, here's a submission form. I'm like, okay, submission form. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, you know what? I think bad day was the first single at the time. I'm like, let's, let's just submit bad day and see what happens. He seems like a really cool guy. <laughs> so we submitted bad day and, um, he played it and I just, the amount of seeing Mr. Smith, uh, I got to meet Mr. Smith for the first time, I think it was last week. Um, um, and uh, so we played it and I was just, I was blown away at the comments. And then like, I think we started off at 120 something subscribers. And like that, after that first like couple of days of like Pete show, and I think I submitted a bad day to Thomas. I'm like, I'm, I'm literally looking at our at our subscribers. And I'm like, we're almost at 200. Like it just it just blew up. I mean, that that's how awesome this community is. So it started with Pete, but then I submitted to Thomas. And and then I think Ed B freaking metal. I'm glad I finally got to say that on this. <laughs> um, so so Ed, uh, I think on Thomas's one of the streams goes, hey, uh, you should head over to Metalhead Hippie. I'm like, well, what's this Metalhead Hippie? And so I go over to Jeff's stream, and uh, and all of a sudden, you know, I, he he's mentioning, you know, just e email me a song, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. So Ooh. I email him. So he played Bad Day, and then it, it blew up from there again. And then next thing I know, Frank is reaching out to us. He's like, hey, so I've got this show. Um, do you, do you guys want to come on? I'm like. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, I Frank, I just, I mean, like as everybody else in the community does, absolutely adore that man. And um, I mean, I, 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 I we, we really appreciate, we appreciate everybody, but uh, Frank, we just abs I absolutely adore Frank. Yeah. And um, so we get on Fr Frank's show, and then while we're on Frank's show, I think you got on. And you're like, hey, you know, and you know, I, uh, you know, why, why, I'd love to have you guys on, you know, my show, and it just one after another after another and next thing i know i'm like i feel like i i feel like i fell in, like we fell and tripped into a hole and like we're in like this this youtube community vortex and i'm like i have i'm sitting there going i have no idea how we got here all i did was submit a song to pete and here we are so we're like I mean, piranhas we smell blood in the water and go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know it's 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 wild and every single one of you has been just it's it's overwhelmingly humble I mean, yeah. it's just, I every, we appreciate all of you. Every day it's surreal. I say it's this just so surreal. many times. If only this community, the rest of the world could have this look into this and see what we have, even if we don't like really like particular music, there's no point like hating on stuff. If you don't, if you don't like it, you don't listen to it. Like, but, but nobody hates, like, that's the thing. If the world <laughs> would be a better place, if this community was the world. Here's here's a good example. Um, so like I think uh, 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 PIA or pronounced alternative right gets on and does this this collab with with Stalingold or I'm sure I butchered that name, but um, normally you know I'm not into you know uh, you know rap or hip hop or that kind of style. But she gets on and I'm like this is a banger. 
I mean, I literally had it on repeat. I'm all, are you, I was like, are you kidding me? And, th and that's what, that's like what you're saying. Like there's no, nobody hates each other's okay so a good example arise right arise just to me is taking the community by by storm too I, phenomenal stuff it's not it's not my taste but i'm listening to the production i'm like why can't i get our production like that it's just it's it's in it sounds so insanely good i mean there's there's no reason to you know have the perspective of oh well that's not my style i don't like it it's i think it's okay to admit if, if something isn't your palate or if you don't like something but the other perspective is to listen to it and go, listen to the production, listen to the lyrics, listen. There's so much more than just that's the music style that I, I like or don't like. There's it, it, it's it's art. It really is art. So, yeah, no, I agree with you. And that's kind of our journey of how we really stumbled into this community. And it, it's 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 been a whirlwind. Tanya. As a, as a musician, like, we, we pour our heart into our music, yeah? And we, we want the best and we listen to it and we, we sweat over it and we sometimes too much. <laughs> but but we put it out there sometimes and it just, you feel like it's not reaching people. How has it been for you sitting there and after all this time you've invested into this, this Crimson Crux, now seeing people that actually, like, care? How's, what's the feeling of coming into this community for you? It's such a different thing for me because I enjoy the music more. I mean, and we've mentioned his health issues a few times, or he's mentioned them. Um, Once or twice. <laughs> since, <laughs> since that, us getting to do the music and continuing to do music after all that started and has actually never completely ended, but um, it, it means something different to me now that we get to continue to make music and at, being faced with the first eight months just honestly i stopped going to work i, I owned a business i never went um because i was waiting for him to die and he almost did Whoa. to be able to just kind of do anything together now is a blessing so every song that we work on together, every I, I have so much different motivation and so much more motivation to work with him and to be able to do the music together and to be able to see a people appreciate it. And I guess getting to see the appreciation, I'm so much happier for him than I am for me to get to see him shine after all that he went through. Um, we never really told the whole world exactly what happened and how bad it was. Even some of our family doesn't quite know how bad it was. So, but I was there and I got to see yeah. how bad it was. Yeah. Um, so getting to see him shine and getting to see him appreciated and his music heard and people actually comment on it. Uh, Cause when you get really sick, the people that you thought yeah. were close to you, either just or they <laughs> suddenly glass and they don't know how to talk to you anymore yep. and they think that they're being helpful and they think that they're being supportive yep. just because they're there but they're not really there mm -hmm. so to have people come together like this community and show this unbiased support for each other and um, it, it's yes we really appreciate this um this support but even watching you guys support each other is amazing to me and so I'll look at it a little differently, I think, than he does, because like yeah. I said, I'm I'm really happy to see him shine and his music to get out there. And it, yes, it's our project and it's our music, yeah. but I get to see him, I guess, I don't want to say reap the benefits because that's not really what it is. It's more like just having people actually care instead of your friends going, oh, that was so good yeah. because uh, of their support. No. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I hope that made sense. No, absolutely, hundred percent. You know, I, I could. I think many people here have lived it firsthand. When you get sick, at first, people are like, "Hey, I'm really concerned," and then that, and then some people disappear because they say, "I can't handle watching it," and then some people just yeah. every every interaction now is about the sickness, and it's like, "I don't want to talk about that. I'm still me," but you're like classing me as this sick thing now. It's and one of the reasons why we had to move. 
yeah. we had wow. we had to because uh, there were many there were many reasons um we we had prayed and there there were lots of god god revealed so many it was ridiculous so that 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 to be fair that was just one small facet of it but it was really hard to um being at home and like if people knew me before it, i always i'm kind of getting back to that now but i i would always i was so gregarious always smiling always laughing and all of a sudden you become that person you're now the invalid yeah you're the sick every time they see how are you doing and i understand <laughs> yeah. that yeah you're just like i'm fine i don't want to talk about this yeah. like it all of a sudden now you are what you went through and i'm like and we had lived in that area since i was four years old so you have every every person you go to stater brothers a local shopping you know the the, the food store there and someone runs into you and because we had done shows we were known fairly well in in the desert so we would go someplace and it was just oh wait, it's crimson crux you know and it was like how are you doing? Like, how's your health? And I'm like, and it really, it, when we moved out here to Kentucky, first of all, culture shock, California, to Kentucky. Um, Hello, we, Kentucky. Oh man. I, oh, I take cows. <laughs> see, <laughs> Amish. Uh, it, oh, Chicken it, everywhere. It, like everywhere. Raccoons. <laughs> uh, wild. So, but when, when we moved out here, it was, I felt like I start over i'm like nobody knows me out here and i love it i love the anonymity like I, mm -hmm. I can just no one's asking me how are you feeling how are you doing and i i did i understand the people that did and i appreciate them and i and i i don't want them to think that i'm ungrateful because we did have we did have you know the handful of those we mostly people we, we did a few really great people that people we didn't know that out when we needed it was anything. all it was always people that a lot of people we didn't even know that came out of the woodwork that were like, I'm like, I didn't know you. And like, all of a sudden there, when I had to walk away from my job that I was with for 14 years and started GoFundMe so we could, you know, pay for the treatments and the bills. Like all of a sudden I'm getting donations from people. Like, I don't know you. Yeah. And just what I, the support. And so, but we had to, we had to move like, like what you were just saying that that becomes you and i we had to move because i literally we were talking and i'm like I, I can't be here i can't do like i'm not going to heal um physically and more i'm not going to heal emotionally if we stay here because now i'm not i'm not nate from crimson crux or just you know i mean not that that's a thing but you know it's what we we're the music and what was associated being a musician that kind of thing it was Oh, you're Nate the, Nate the invalid. Not, not that they would call you that, but you're sick. And I'm like, I, I can't be looked at like this anymore. Like, I, I we need to get out, and I need a I need a new start. So, yeah, I agree 100. percent And on the other scale of it, like I used to sit there and think, oh, I mean, why is this happening to me? Why I don't I don't. Again, it's it's a, it's how you look at things that can, you know. And now I look at it and go, I'm now. Sure, I still wake up every day covered in blood. My, I, I throw out hundreds of dollars of sheets every month from my blood condition. I can't clot blood. That is what that's my lot for life now. And people don't see it. They probably the first time anyone's really seen extreme was on when I did a performance on GMA show. My nose just started bleeding everywhere. And but that's every day. But I think about it now and go, I'm so lucky that that happened because I wouldn't have changed. To be a much better person for that, you know, it, it, look, it's a horrible yeah. thing to have to go through. And I, I wish there was a way more people could go through the change, the growth that you get from facing yeah. and battling illness without battling the illness. I wish there was a way that it's a shortcut, but. It, if anybody understands what you're talking about, it's me. Yeah. Um, no, I, and I mean that from like the depths of my soul. If anybody understands what. Somebody that has my, my issue was a gut uh, thing, uh, the infection medication I shouldn't have been given, and it basically ate my guts from the inside out, and right. uh, and uh, you know just destroyed my my guts. And like by the time I got to the point where it's food poisoning, it, it it was feeling way way better. Um, and um, you do that for eight months, and then you do treatments for a year and a half. And what you're saying, your your condition, and going through that, you're you're there 
And the people that don't haven't been through that and they don't understand, not only do they not know what to say after a while, it's, 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 it, they're not there when it's happening. They, there's, there's trauma, there's PTSD, there's, there's even being on these panels. I've had a couple times and I sure, I'm sure you might be one of the only ones that might be able to understand this. We're like, we were on with Lori and we had a great time, but that first one, I almost had to dive off because it was getting bad. I had to stop laughing for a second because things were starting to happen. And so my biggest fear of doing these panels is I'm sure that, that if anybody understands it's you in the back of your mind all the time, you're like, when is it going to happen? When, yeah. when you're sitting there going, okay, I'm good right now. I, I'll be honest with you before we came on, but just before we came on, it was getting, I literally went upstairs and, I, and I'm like, I don't know if I, it, it was getting really nasty. And then it started to back, off just actually while i was sitting here uh you know before the show it was it, it was i was coming out of it and so what you're saying about um see i'm getting old because i i lost the initial thought that's the it, 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 i I try, I try to blame it on you know being Boom. sick but really it's just i'm old and it just happens but um you're, no you're, but you're I, so I, old mate wait it, wait it, till it, you get it, to 51 mate all right Oh, please, please, no. But it's bad enough. It hurts now. It's, yeah, it's bad enough. But I, what you're saying, if anybody understand, I, I wish I could sit there in that room with you and look you in the eye and just go, I, and just tell you I understand. Because I think you, you, you would, I, I get it. And I don't know how else to put it. I think this I understand. This is one of the things about this community because there is a lot, and I'm not saying everybody, but there is a lot of this stuff going on, right, with a lot of artists. I've interviewed a lot of people and there's trauma. Everyone has trauma, right, even if it's not like life and death situations. And like I said to you at the beginning, like anybody who's here in the chat knows, I, I give a pep talk at the start of every interview, be careful what you say because what you say opens a thread for me to pull on and it, it could go down a place. Falcon Blues is here in the chat. You know what I'm talking about, my friend, because I'll never forget that interview with you, my friend. That that took a turn, you know, and that's not saying it was a, it's terrible or anything because this is where we go when uh, when this – and this is, I think, why this community works so well. There's, we've all got shit. We've all got baggage and it's music that holds us together, yeah. Music really does hold us together, and we're very, we're very blessed for that. Speaking of music, <laughs> segue. This is Black and Blue, and it just feels like the right title to play just after that conversation. So let's play it. Let's. Uh, you ready, folks? Bit of Black and Blue. Let's do it right now. Let's urge.
as Hippie would say. Pete Johns has joined us. Hello, Pete. Uh, parenting conflicts as always. Dan Eckberg. Uh, some people I do have missed. I've missed Hetriani in here as well. Metalhead Hippie, of course. Um, who else do I see? Meeps Music. I uh, haven't actually said hello to you. I should do that. Um, uh, doorways, did I say hi to you? I can't remember. My brain hurts. Seagull Rock Squawk. Hello to you. If I have missed you, guys. And Laurie's Mishmosh. If I've missed you, I'm an idiot. It just is what it is. But let me tell you one thing is uh, now one of the reasons now, now that Pete's here, you said Pete's a bit of a gateway drug. This is one of the yeah. reasons <laughs> me and Pete, I, I can speak for Pete on this. One of the reasons we do this, why I sit here every day and do this and try and help people make the best music uh, because it's so beautiful to see people grow and get better and, and pick up tiny little things. This is what I live for now. I've lived. I've lived in the spotlight. I've had my time as a Z grade celebrity, and now I get to sit here every day and share my knowledge and see people grow. It just it empowers me so much to see other people grow so much, and I just love it. Now, talking about your current music, your recent music, I'm a garage band enthusiast. I've been using this thing since on on iPad since it first came out. Right, I've been using GarageBand for over, feels like over fourteen years or something now on, on iOS, and I can hear some GarageBand in in your music. That I can hear bass in. I can hear GarageBand sounds because I know every goddamn sound in GarageBand because it took them so long to release Logic, and we got stuck with so many old sounds. So, yep. is that how do you make your music? What is it on? But it's GarageBand. Go through the process with us, please. And this is why I talk so much. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, what's funny is when I started writing a garage band, it's because um, when I was going through that hell situation, my hands hurt too much to play guitar because of the malabsorption. My body wasn't getting the nutrients. So my hands, my fingers were really fragile. And uh, there were a couple of years where I couldn't play guitar, but I had all this music in my head. So um I learned how to use a lot of the different instruments and in unorthodox ways. So like the bass, for instance, I use, I think it's from the keyboard. And what I did was I, I added the overdrive plugin on it. I added, uh, there's a rough rider, uh, compressor, uh, that I picked up, I think free from the app store Yep. and, and I messed with the, uh, EQing on it and it ended up getting this rumble that sounded like, I'm like, this sounds like it's legit. Like it's, it's like, it's real. And I hand plays basically every note, every beat, the guitars sometimes are a blend. Um, sometimes for the rhythm, what I'll do is. The keyboard settings, there's a the guitar uh, um, effect. That's the one that that is the presets on that compressor sounds so, so good. good. Yeah, New, New York Parallel. I use that one as kind of like my go to. The presets on that compressor, I found it by accident. Like I, I found the the tape cassette. Um, I use a tape cassette one. I, I discovered from Pete. Um, I use that for vocal saturation. I don't use it for distortion or anything else. I just use it for a little more depth and saturation. Um, the guitars, like on Bad Day, you'll hear, it, it's always a blend in the songs. You'll hear live and then you'll hear, to enhance the rhythm, you'll hear there's a keyboard effect uh, with the guitars and I'll pan it hard right and hard left. Now, if you play with it enough and add the compressors in the right spot on the chain, um, and then add a, a little bit of the overdrive. They, it sounds identical. Not just that. People keep mentioning the fuzz. That's how I get that fuzz sound. It's a blend. You know, you, you, you have your uh, the guitar and then you've got – I love to play. I don't think anything is wrong. When you get into mixing, if you can get the sound that's in your head into that, that DAW – you've succeeded and you need, you absolutely need to bend the rules. And so that's how I get my rhythms is uh, a mix with those uh, keyboard uh, guitars and then the putting the overdrive and EQing in the compressors, the bass, same thing with the bass. Uh, it comes off of the keyboards, but I, I hand there, 
because of the max track limit and some of the limitations, there are no, like, I, I don't use easy drummer. I hand place every single drum beat. So there's probably the whole album, thousands of drum beats. Uh, and I've hand placed, uh, I've literally, what you hear on the drums, because I, I, I took drum lessons briefly. I'm not Mr. Smith. Like, I'm, I'm not good. But coming from metal, coming from metal, you hear different combinations, right? When you hear the triplets and the claws and the flams and the ch you, you hear all of these fills from, I think what helped me is coming from the metal scene. You hear, I've, I've heard so many different drum combinations and from playing a little bit, it, I was able to go in and I, I use SoCal drums is the uh, drums that I prefer. Cause I think it just sounds the, the, there are other ones I think that have like a heavier, almost grass, grass um, roots kind of sound. But the SoCal uh, drums, I think, sound the most studio recorded drum sound. Yep. And then I, agree. I, I spend forever, I mean, forever e EQing them and getting, uh, going into the, the equalizer, getting that right, adding the compression and, you know, the rate, getting, trying to get the ratio right. I think like the, the snare, I think I have two to one. And it's, um, so it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of playing and experimenting. I experiment like you wouldn't believe. I mean, so like you said, like, like, like I've said, that's how I get my bass. That's how I get the rhythm guitars, the drums hand play. I hand place every single note that you hear. It takes me a stupid amount of time and I'm sure there's a faster and smarter way to do it. I just haven't discovered it yet. Um, so I don't use any loops. I, I hand place all of them. Uh, and then there are different sounds. Like there's a whistle. Really, that key, the keys are the bread and butter because there are so many different synths and different ways that you can and that you can play with them and get them to sound like other things and the whistle and the key. My key that I discovered is panning, panning correctly. Yes. I try to I try to put things where other things aren't. And that's the mistake I made. Like if you listen to Scar, I'm sure you can hear. It is, it, it's everything's right there. And you're going, this is so bassy. Everything is like, I had this bad habit when we first started recording going, hey, let me double track guitar. Okay, right, you know, hard right, hard left. Everything I did back then, hard right, hard left, hard right, hard left. And it's just mud. And yeah. so with this, with this particular album, I spent so much time um, trying to go, okay, let's put the vocal center. Let's do mono. Okay, the guitars. Let's go hard right, hard left because I wanted to widen. I wanted to widen the mix. Bass, uh, kick, snare. Let's put those center. Since I'm like, let's go 75 right. Let's go, you know, 75 left. And then backing vocals. I'm like, okay, well, I already got the leads in the middle. We got the guitars uh, all the way out. So I put a lot of the backing vocals like 75 or 50 right, left. And so the key that I discovered is just put things where other things aren't keep. There are necessities that have to be in mono. There are things that have to be in the center. There are things that have to be panned. The one thing I did that I couldn't get the drum fills right at first, it's because I was putting the high Tom, uh, I think 75 left. I was putting the low Tom 75, right. And I was trying to pan it left or right. As if you're doing a drum roll. The problem was the, the floor Tom and the low Tom were both, the same on the pan so what i did was i actually put the floor tom center so when you the, when you hear the roll it sounds like you're going high tom left low tom right and then it comes back around slightly to the middle for the floor tom so it actually sounds like a roll that's going around and it kind of deceives the ear and normally i would put the floor tom right so those are the kind of experimental things that that i i, I spent kind of like a year just messing with and uh, enhancing and blending uh, some of uh, keyboard stuff with the guitar, like you can hear in Bad Day, you know, some of the riffs um, there. And it just experiment, use everything because you end up getting, you end up getting something different. You end up getting something that's out of the box. And so I, I just love playing with it. And that that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the, the, the recording process for me. I talk about it all the time. Break the rules because you know what? There are no rules. The minute you, you, have you s subject yourself to rules making music is the minute you are not making music. Yeah, it sounds like a cookie cutter cut out of every band that's ever yeah. done anything. And that's why we, we had a really cool opportunity <laughs> present to us a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm hoping we can share in a couple of weeks. And I think the reason 
that this album got on that radar is because of um stepping out of the box like that it, it because one of the questions in in this this it, part of the opportunity was was an interview and, and one of the questions was what do you, what makes you stand out and i basically what I, what we what i just shared here that is what i said in the article was um was that think out think outside the box and uh do different things like just the drum loops it's not good enough for me i hand place every beat because sometimes there's a fill like i'll hear a triplet and then I'll hear just, you know, dun, 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 you know, and then I'll hear like a kick flutter. And I'm like, well, I can't get that with a loop. And so it might take me a week to get the drums right. Uh, and then the other thing, like with the cymbals is I was making the mistake of making them too bright before. So I I learned <laughs> to keep the 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 crashes. Um, I I discovered high pass and low pass for the first time with this recording. And made great use of putting the low pass on the overheads, putting the high pass on like the bass and some of the other stuff. Um, there, these were all things I didn't know when we did our Carousel album. Um, so there's the one thing I, I can say is just experiment. And if you're a garage band, please, please go through the keyboard sounds. You are going to find things. Um, like I said, I did hand place every note. So, I mean, my fingers was actually on there. Like, like, uh, like, like it was, um, uh, my escaping my brain cause I'm old again, but, um, right, right. Like, like a MIDI MIDI, you know? And so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm with my phone and my, my fingers are here and I'm just, you know, <laughs> when you hear black and blue, I'm actually playing it, but I'm doing it on my phone. You know, the, 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 I, I, I practiced that and I played it with my fingers on my phone to try to get that, that, that sound. And so everything, there are no like loops. There's it's, I, everything was tracked by me. It was just done unorthodoxly. So don't let him fool you. He could have played any one of those instruments. It was easy. It was easier from the couch and, and what honestly what they offered sounded better. I mean, other, other than, than, than the guitar. And like I said, that how I get that fuzz is, is blending that and, and that key guitar uh, sound hard, right, hard left. And you end up getting this stereo, fuzz and because that's probably one of the comments we get on the most is oh those those loving the fuzz guitars I'm like well that's that's how i got it was blending the two so i agree with you you got to step out of the box or you're going to just end up writing what everybody else is writing and who would have thought we would have been here tapping on a piece of glass to make music you know we live Wild. in the future but at the same time this is the other thing with making music on ios you you have you have no choice but to think outside the box because there's limitations you're limited yeah, Limited. especially if you're staying to one thing like GarageBand, there are limitations. You hit a brick wall after time, but yep. there's always a way around it. But you've got to be thinking all the time, you know. And I see a lot yep. of people, because I review apps all the time, people just want a new app to solve the problem. And it's like, but here's the problem. You want something easy to fix it where you're not yes. you're not problem solving. And that's what humans do. We problem solve. So if you're unable to problem solve without a new app to fix it, this app ain't gonna help you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. That's it. You, no, you, I, you I have to be you. Einstein, right? <laughs> you have well, to be Einstein. And, and there's a there's a really fun technique I use for the vocals too. So what what? This is how I record my vocals. Yeah, we we don't, <laughs> really. Yeah, we don't use an external mic. The, the trick that I learned is. Um, I, I'm probably not supposed to do this. You know what? I'm really, <laughs> I'm really blessed by you. You don't know how happy you, that, that re I worked really hard on the vocals and that, that really made me happy that response because um, I was really, you have no idea how worried I was. Cause I, I botched the vocals so bad on the carousel album. The songs are fantastic. We're actually re glitch is a song I remixed and remastered from our Carousel album because I think it deserved a chance. That's why we, we're, I'm doing that. We're doing that with a couple other songs from that album too. But um, the vocal trick that we do, we have a pop filter, right? And we stick it probably uh, four inches or so from from the, the mic. We just record direct. It means the phone. The phone, right? Because we, we don't use an external mic, but I we have a pop filter up, you know, to, to kind of get rid of, you know, make sure the plosives aren't, aren't you know, doing... Uh, you know, all, all that nasty stuff. What I discovered is I'm 
I'm probably not supposed to do this, um, but I run I run the stock compressor in GarageBand. Um, I don't remember the ratio I used. Uh, I'd have to look it up. And I also run and I put them. I put one at the beginning of the chain, and I I think I put rough rough rider compression at the end of the chain. And what it what it did was is it really tamed all the sibilants and 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 really tamed the the the, the harsh like plosives that were happening. And I bought this other app. I forgot the name of it, but it um it had a bunch of things in it: high pass, low pass, uh, all in one. So I didn't have to use the high pass and low pass uh, GarageBand uh, uh, stock you know uh, audio unit extensions. This one app had it. The cool thing I want to get at is with the harmonies. The way I the we she tracks harmonies, but there are a couple of times when I'm just lazy uh, and I'm doing something to find out where the the harmony is, um, uh, if it's in the 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 third, the fifth, or the seventh, which I was talking to fifteenth bend about. Please, everybody, I do not know as much about theory as as I sound like I do. Um, but um, when I was doing the harmonies, um, what I was doing was I was you know when you click on the stem and you can drop the semitones. What I was doing on the harmonies is I would have her track, I would drop the semitones to whatever the harmony was, the third, fifth, or seventh, and then I would go through and I would pitch uh, change the um, uh, the frequency of her vocals up to what actually sounded like her vocals. Because when you whenever you mess with the semitones, it, it you're gonna sound either like a chipmunk or you're gonna sound that so what I would do is after I dropped the semitones, uh, how wh wherever the harmony was, I would go back and I would um, change the pitch. I forgot which audio unit extension I used, but it would change her pitch to. So that's kind of the combination I used for certain for certain spots in the song, like um, like uh, if there were gang vocals, that would enhance that and really just kind of make it uh, precise. And so I had a lot of fun messing with harmonies on. Uh, the ones that weren't tracked, I, I we did it all. We tracked regular lead vocals. We tracked harmonies. I I used that technique to get additional harmonies and spots that I felt needed something different. There, there was such a variety of things that that we did in the mix that I would have to go through it and <laughs> look up because someone asked me a question about I forgot something that we did in the mix and i was like i don't remember what i did um, there were so many things I'm, i'd have to go back and look it up we will find out because i do a show here and it's been on hiatus for a while but i'm actually considering bringing it back soon where we bring artists on and they send me their projects and oh, we go through it fun. so maybe uh, you can be the first one to kick that back off i'm thinking of kicking, well, it, love... kicking it off so that will I be another fun to. show because i know you love to talk <laughs> I feel like Bless damned you. if I do damned if I do. You know? <laughs> yeah, look at Pete. He's already in there. Jade, you need to do a behind the song with me. Oh, Pete, I'm, all, I'm ahead of you, Pete. See, me and Pete, we're on the same level. That's why. Uh, I, I feel like mates. we did that, that people are going to be like, this is horrible. What are you guys doing? Or like, that's what you got. You're cheating. Why did you do that? And I'm like, hey, at the every the response the music is getting and just me wanting wanting to listen to it, I'm like, there had to be something that was done right. <laughs> you know? Music's not about technique, man. It's about here. It's about. Oh, and, we, and then we use, um, I'm not a big fan of, I like what you're doing, hands-on mastering. We were dealing with budget. We, we just didn't have a budget. So I actually found a suggested um, ad because, you know, our phones are, you know, as intrusive as heck now. So um, I got a, uh, whether I said something and my phone picked up on it or what, I got a um, suggested ad for Waves uh, Audio and I discovered their um, mastering, uh, AI mastering, which again, I would prefer to have hands-on, but it, it's just super expensive. And so I tested one out and I went, that doesn't sound half bad. Of course, I test mastered 27 masters yeah. because I was I, I wasn't happy with, you know, one until I got to like the 27th one. I think Glitch was test mastered 27 times because I just wasn't happy with it. But at the bottom, the at the end of the day, I was really impressed. I still think someone like you and other engineers that are hands on, I, I think that's the best way to go. But for dealing with, um, if you're in a position where you just don't have a budget, 
paying uh 50 bucks to get 15 credits and each credit is a 50? song really I think I paid 50 bucks and it was like 15 credits and that, that allowed us to master the album. And Thomas, with, I think so, Thomas straight away, he's put, you can become a patron if you want. And for a dollar a month, I'll master all your songs. A dollar a month. I am the, really? that's how cheap I am. I'm a cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas put it in the chat okay. as well. No, it's a dollar a month to so join my Patreon. You get your songs mastered. Okay, um, yeah, so that that's probably going to happen. Um, <laughs> uh, Everyone keeps telling me I should put the price up, but you know, hey, it doesn't matter. Um, that it, oh, oh, let, let me just tell you this: my <laughs> other friend uh, offered, and it was two hundred and fifty bucks for um, you, you. You you know you know the pricing. I mean, you you know the pricing. It gets it gets insane. Um, that's, I don't even have the words like that, that, that seems, like theft. um, that, that seems like theft. Um, it is, so it is, God, theft. it is, theft. but, but I love my community, man. I, this is, this is it. I love, do, and I do it every week on the show. We have a, a so Saturday US time and it's the same time as my normal show, but it's a private stream and, and all, all the patrons come in and you get feedback on your song from people that you can trust and like you can actually that take some blows. feedback. It's a great little community we have. That just, and I get that to talk blows. a load of shit as well and we do some app giveaways and stuff like that. So, But there's higher tiers if people want to pay more. <laughs> so it's up to them, you know. But a dollar gets you your music mastered. Anything higher allows you to win apps. So that's the tier system. All right, enough of me plugging shit. We got two last questions. We're running over time, but that's going to be okay because it's going to tie into your premiere coming up. Let me hit you with my two questions that I hit everybody with. First, I'll start with you, Nate, and then we'll end with Tanya. If you were stuck on a desert what island, if, if you this were isn't my fault, this if, isn't my fault. Like, if, if you just, were stuck. If you were stuck on a desert island and you didn't have a volleyball to talk to, which album would you like to have with you? Oh, man. One of ours or, or any uh, album? And just an album that's going to get you through the sadness of being stuck on a desert island. It can be any album, your own, any album. Just one. I'm thinking right now, because because I, I go in phases, right? So... If I had any album, there's a, oh man, man, that is a hard question. Cause like my old me wants to, to, to say like tribute Randy Rose, right. Or it wants to do something, um, have something theatrical with a lot going on. So it's not the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, four, four tempo, just, you know, three minute song. Um, if I had any album, Younger me would probably say tribute from Randy Rhodes. Uh, current me would probably mm -hmm. say something like uh, Beyond the Black has uh, their their uh, symphonic metal band from Germany, and I just love Jennifer Hobbins' voice so much. Um, I would probably uh, outside of Tanya's voice, um, I would Close. probably. I would, yeah, I, I didn't want to, that, that, that one, that one was a little too close. No, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to sleep with the cast tonight. So that was, uh, um, I would say beyond the black there. Um, I think probably their heart of the hurricane album. Pick a boxing. All right. All right. That I didn't think that would, was going to be such a hard question. It's just a theoretical question. <laughs> It's a very, that's a very hard question. Tanya, what about you? Uh, <laughs> I think that's hard for me too, but I, I would really probably pick our last album, Carousel, because I listen to that more than it. Lovely. That's perfect. The final okay. question I'm going to hit you all with is what I ask everybody. If you were giving advice to somebody who's starting out being creative, making music, doing something that is a passion to them, when would be the best time for them to start? Oh, I thought that was going another direction. Um, what, what what would you say? What's the best time to start? Um, no. it, it, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. Now, what do you wait? I, why didn't I think of that? That is That was a great answer. Now. 
I don't think uh, I've had, I've asked somebody a question, asked that question and got a different response except for one artist. So it is a trick question. So, all right, let, let's cover a couple of things. Folks, all of the links to Crimson Crux's music is in the description. Everything you can think of, it's all down there. Every single thing, social media, Instagrams, all the stuff, you can go and find them there. Link trees, there's everything you can find. Okay, we have a premiere coming up after this in about, uh, about 15, 18 minutes or something like that. I will dump you over there. If you don't get automatically dumped, it'll show at the end and you can click on it and head over there and we're going to have a party and go celebrate the brand new song. If you're not there, I will, trust me, find you. All right? So <laughs> we'll all go over there and have some fun with that. Um, I need to cover some um, homework stuff here. Let me uh, tell you what's going on here on the channel. Uh, tomorrow we're taking a look at an app here on the channel. We're looking at this thing. It is from Blease. It is multiband compressor. It's pretty crazy what it does for the price. It's super cheap. That is happening uh, tomorrow. And also Walk With Me is back tomorrow. So, folks, it's not up yet. I'm still editing it. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss Walk With Me tomorrow. I went back home. I went to my mother's grave. You probably are going to want to miss it if you don't want to cry. Because it's hardcore. It's the finale of season three, episode eight. It's going to be a brutal one. It was hard on me. It crushed my soul. I even went and found my old home and the people who live there now let me walk through my own home, my old home as a kid. Amazing this shit that went down. Also, what is happening here on the channel on, as usual, uh, the... Opening hour is happening and it's community covers and I'm singing three songs that you may not have heard me sing before. One, I'm singing a 15th Ben song. I'm actually singing a Lizard Day song and the brand new track by me and Mateusz Prokowski, which is premiering tomorrow on the Metal Head Hippie Anniversary Show. So if you want to hear the new song by me and Mateus, it's happening tomorrow. It's rad. It's going to knock your socks off. It's incredible. It's heavy, We're heavy. There. We're there. We are going to be there. Okay, so I want to thank you both for coming on here, being so candid and uh, sharing your music and your story with us. I always feel so privileged to have so many wonderful people trust me enough to share their story. So thank you so much for that, and thank you for making such great, inspiring music for all of us here and just being a part of this community and supporting so many other people. Is there anything you would like to say to the great people who've been here today or watching on the replay before we go? Well, we all know that that I've got to a lot to say. Of course. I've got. So, what 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 would what would you like to say? <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for being supportive, for being the amazing artists that you are. And if you ever doubt yourself and think that you're not good enough, just crush that thought. Just keep working. Just keep trying. Just keep making music. And as long as you enjoy your music, that's really what counts. Even if it's not music that you're doing, even if it's something else, just do it for your enjoyment, for yeah. to make you happy and what makes you feel like you got your, um, whatever your goal was with creating, what you're being creative with. Just keep going because even if you, you know, never look at it again, you did something. And eventually you're going to look back and go, I did all of these things. But yeah. if you never get started and you don't keep going, and you can't ever go back and look at what you've done and be proud of yourself for keeping it up. That's how we're ending today. Perfect. All right. Let's get out of here. Um, we're going to play one last song. This is Hit the Lights. This is a brand new track until uh, 15 minutes from now. We've got a brand new track again. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll play this and get out of here. I'm going to say what I say to every day to people here. Stay awake, my friends. Okay. Do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better and we'll all rise together. You know, it's all about that. Please hang on the line just until the show's over so I can say goodbye to you off the air. And uh, Got it. let's oge. This is Hit the Lights. Crimson Crux. You, Subscribe Thank to you. them now or I'll find you. Trust me. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> oge. Hit the light. Boom. Boom.